Sanctuary City standoff. Los Alamitos is the latest city in California to opt out of the state's sanctuary city rules. Now San Diego will follow suit, set to vote on the matter later today. This comes after Democrat Governor Jerry Brown said that he would limit the duties of the National Guard troops stationed at the border, committing that the troops have nothing to do with immigration enforcement. Joining us now is former special assistant to President Trump, former press secretary to Vice President Pence, and RNC consultant Mark Lauder. That's pretty amazing that he would say that, Mark. Nothing to do with border security with the troops right there on the border. Unfortunately, it's not surprising. I mean, what we've seen coming out of, out of California state government is it, they're not interested in protecting their border. They're not interested in protecting their citizens. And it's great to finally see some common sense coming out of some of the local governments that are pushing back against the uh, just the, the crazy progressive uh, ideas that are coming out of uh, out of California. But this movement is getting bigger, Brian Brenberg, the people who are pushing back against the sanctuary city. How do you see it? Yeah, I mean, do you, Mark, I mean, as you look Look at this movement. That's my reaction too. You see more and more municipalities, cities coming online here. I mean, do you see like a fundamental groundswell in California, or is this going to stop with what we're seeing right now? I really do. Before I came to the federal government, I worked in state and local government in Indiana, and and local government is where it's at. That's where you're literally talking neighborhood to neighborhood, family to family. Your decisions affect each of those people that live in your area. So to see them pushing back to protect their families, their neighborhoods against the overreach of of Sacramento is just not. It's not surprising. Mark, yep. I, I think you're, you're hitting the nail on the head here, but one of the things that, that it, it has sort of kind of been pushed to the wayside is DACA, and I'm try, trying to figure out where is that going to play into the rest of the year or next year's agenda, because all of a sudden we're seeing the border uh, being talked about. We're starting to see the sanctuary cities uh, dialogue heat up, but I haven't heard much on DACA. That really comes down to what are Democrats willing to do? Do they want to solve the issue? Or do they just want to talk about the issue? The president has said on more than one occasion he is ready to make a deal on DACA. He wants to be compassionate. He wants to treat them with, with fairness and, and compassion. But the Democrats only want to talk about the issue, use it as a political wedge. And so until they're ready to come to the table, there's really not a lot the president and Republicans can do. Well, there's the th that, that's the, the rob, though, right? Because they want to make this a campaign issue. You're going into to a contentious campaign for the 2018 elections. A lot of people expecting the House to, to lose uh, uh, perhaps the majority, Senate seats to go Democrat. What are you expecting? How, does the Repub how do the Republicans keep the majority, Mark? I think while we sit here on tax day, we've got to talk about the economy. We've got to talk about tax reform. The only thing so far that we know that Democrats want to run on is repealing the tax reform that's cutting people's taxes, going to put more money in people's paychecks. We're just getting word. I think Kroger you know, announced 11,000 new jobs, $500 million in new wages and benefit increases due to the tax cut plan that President Trump and Republicans enacted. It's very difficult to run on a platform of higher tax taxes, fewer jobs, less growth, and in this case, more sanctuary cities, drugs pouring into our neighborhoods. That's just not a strong message to run on. Mark, it's Dave McDowell. Well, President Trump ran and won on draining the swamp, and it seems like at least once a week we learn about some really swamp-tastic behavior for, from people who work for him. There was the $43,000 soundproof phone booth uh -uh. for EPA chief Scott Pruitt. He just needed, again, <laughs> which he didn't get approval for that kind of expense from congressional uh, from congressional committees, there's a more than $12,000 charter flight that Ryan Zinke, the head of the interior, took with some of his staffers from Las Vegas to Montana. Again, this is right in President Trump's wheelhouse. What are these people doing? Well, and I don't want to speak to any specific action or no, any specific you can speak individual. No, because these that, are just but... a couple of examples of right. it, it just, it's just spending that's unnecessary. What's going on over there? I think what we need to make sure we're doing is we're, that we're that we stay focused on what the mission is. And and while EPA Administrator Pruitt is doing a great job repealing regulations, we've got to stop these actions that are sidetracking the agenda, sidetracking the mission. And, and I would encourage everyone in uh, the administration, especially the political appointees, to make sure that every time you take an action, you just ask yourself, are you advancing what the president wants done? Okay. Are you moving the ball forward on his agenda, acting his agenda? Yeah. And but if you're not, then you need 
need to, to rethink it. Is that conversation happening, though, Mark? Because it's incredible that these stories are still happening. I mean, that this is still taking place. It's been a, a, enough of a, of a trend uh, that you would think that the conversation and the, the tone is there that, that people know not to abuse funding and, and money and, and use these, you know, for these extravagant trips or what have you. So that yeah, again, has I don't the want president to speak to spoken, a... I mean, has this conversation taken place? Yeah, I, I don't want to speak to a specific trip or, or, mm -hmm. or action, okay. but I can tell you that, that at, a, at a cabinet level, uh, from the Cabinet Affairs Department and many White House senior advisors, they are definitely looking at this, and they are okay. definitely going to be holding those officials to count. And you can only get so far if, if you these actions are distracting from the president's message, right. his movement, then they've got to ask themselves, look in the mirror and say, why are we doing well, this? Well, there's another message out tonight to discuss. It is from former FBI Director Jim Comey. The contentious tell-all book is out today. A higher loyalty hitting shelves. The book's blistering commentary on President Trump and Comey's interview with ABC already creating a firestorm ahead of the release. The interview's ratings coming in well below expectations, actually. That was interesting. And the network is now under fire for actually editing down the interview. So what's your take on all of this extraordinary situation taking place where Jim Comey is giving this book tour right in the middle of uh, two major congressional investigations into the FBI and his leadership of it? Well, so far, I would say that the uh, the book and the interview are much to do about nothing, but actually it's much to do about Comey and, and his ego. And the, the interesting thing I've taken away so far is look at the circular firing squad that has been created between former Attorney General Loretta Lynch, mm -hmm. Comey, McCabe, and others while they try to cover themselves and they try to take out the other ones as they're getting their stories all confused in terms of their actions. That's something I think we need to keep an eye on because really the level of of contempt for the American people, the level of political influence on their actions uh, by that ho small handful of people as it related to the Clinton investigation, the Trump investigation, is really coming out to bear right now. And right now they're all targeting each other to see how it's going to play out. Yeah, you say it's much to do about nothing. Maybe the book is and what Jim Comey is saying in his interview is, but actually there's a lot here when you look at the abuse of power at the top of the FBI. And that's really not being discussed. Uh, even though we just had part of the IG report explaining all the specifics about Andrew McCabe and why he's fired and the four times he lied, three times of which is under oath. That's, that's not not to do about nothing. No, and I think as more on the IG report comes out, yeah. especially on those actions, we are going to definitely see more calls for investigations from Congress. And, and, I'm, and I'm very curious to see how that IG, the Inspector General report from the, from the Department of Justice, what they do with that, where they take that information. Will they refer it to a grand jury? Will they send it to a prosecutor? Or will they create a second special counsel mm. to take the next steps on those issues? What we're seeing is very disturbing. It's not surprising. It's something that many Republicans and conservatives conservatives have been talking about for two years yeah. now, um, and, and now it's coming out, and I think the American people are going to are going to be shocked when they see what uh, happened. People are definitely more educated on the subject today than, than ever. Mark, thank you. Mark Lauder, good to see you, sir.